This right here is the spinning rod, also known as the whippy stick, the fairy wand, uh, and many other euphemisms in the bass fishing world that uh, are not oftentimes positive. The spinning rod is definitely not seen in terms of uh, a lot of the people I hang around with as one of our favorite rod and reel combos. I prefer, of course, to throw a bait casting combo, but when it comes to beginner anglers and when it comes to smallmouth bass up here up north, you cannot beat the spinning rod, and I've actually started to fall madly in love with this spinning combo right here. Now, I get quite a few DMs all the time on Instagram and YouTube comments about what spinning rod combo I'm throwing and why I have this green line, as you can see here on this reel. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody? My name is Tyler Anderson and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. I'm making my goal every single video right here to teach you guys how to become better bass anglers. Uh, I hope this video doesn't become any sort of sponsor plug. This is going to be just me talking about what a spinning rod is, why I like to use it for smallmouth bass, and of course show you guys a few fish catches, including my new PB. I'm not going to tell you exactly what type of fish it is, but here's a little bit of that catch. There's one. I don't know what we got, man me some weird head shakes here. Oh my gosh! This thing's a giant! That was definitely an incredibly hard fight, and I would not have gotten that fish in the boat if it wasn't for the exact combo that I'm throwing. Um, but before we talk about this exact combo, let's talk about why you need a spinning rod. Uh, I, I definitely went through a phase, kind of middle of my bass fishing life, where I hated a spinning rod. I didn't think it was necessary. I didn't want to throw a shaky head, a drop shot, a wacky rig, none of that. If I did throw it, I really wanted to throw it on a bait caster, and I didn't really have a reason why, besides the fact that I just thought the spinning rods were for, for wussies. Uh, and I was so dang wrong, because spinning rods have such a huge place in my arsenal now, and I almost always have two to three rigged up on the deck at all times on my bass boat, and at least two with me in my kayak. And so a spinning rod is important for you to have in your arsenal because it allows you to throw lighter lures farther and have a better feel of them. Now, I kind of pick up a bait caster here. Where's my frog bait caster? Here it is. So I have a 7.6 heavy. Here I have a 7.2 medium. Uh, not all rods are made the same, and these two rods are definitely just about polar opposites. Now, I'm going to be making a video very soon, probably in the next few weeks, about uh, the differences between a bait casting rod and a spinning rod, and then I'll also make some on the rod uh, powers and actions, what that means uh, when it comes to bass fishing, moderate, heavy, medium, heavy, fast action, all that kind of stuff. I'll be making a video on that. Um, but there's such a difference between a bait caster and a spinning rod, because a bait caster is mostly for making accurate casts, using heavier lines, being able to horse fish out of out of thick cover, uh, deep fishing uses with a bait caster, and uh, deep cranking, that kind of stuff, because uh, that rod and that reel can handle that. Now what those rods usually can't handle is throwing a tiny swim bait, throwing a drop shot. Uh, I guess you can throw a wacky rig on a bait caster, but it works better, in my experience, on a spinning rod. Uh, and so that is where a spinning rod shines, when you have to throw lighter lures and have a better feel of them. So when it comes to spinning rods, kind of the, the main ones that I throw on it are drop shot, uh, swim bait, tube, um, what do you call it? Like by swim bait, I meant like a little swim bait head, shaky head, hair jig, anything that's usually uh, a quarter ounce and lighter is what I put on a spinning rod. And a trend that's kind of started a few years ago and has definitely taken over the, the hardcore bass world is to use two different lines on your spinning rod. I use a braided main line and then I use a fluorocarbon leader. So here I have Seaguar, uh, Smackdown Braid, this is 15 pound, I use 15 or 20, kind of interchangeably, they're just about the same. Um, and I use the Flash Green, I'll talk about that in a second, and then I tie it to an 8 pound to 12 pound Seaguar Tatsu fluorocarbon leader. Now the reason why I do that is because I want to be able to see if my line is moving. So much about finesse fishing is being able to see and feel that bite. And braided line not only allows you to see if your line is moving to the side or if your line kind of jolts like you got a bite, but it also is way more sensitive than any kind of fluorocarbon or monofilament line. Braided line just allows you to feel so much more of what is down there, and especially when you're throwing a, a very, very light, uh, kind of whippy, whippy spinny stick, I guess you could call it. Um, 
you want to have the most fuel possible. When I was first beginning bass fishing, I would, you know, rig up straight monofilament or straight fluorocarbon, and I would definitely not get as much um, feel with it. And also, I would have I would have stretch, and so that's another issue when you're throwing a tiny lure. You don't want to have any stretch on your hook set, much like a bait caster. Now, a bait caster, the rods are usually a little bit longer. You can kind of make up for it with your fast gear ratio and your heavy rod and heavy hook set. With the spinning rod, though, you don't want any stretch in that line. You want to let the rod, the bend of the rod, the medium medium light of the rod do the work not the uh, the the line itself and so that is why braid is so important to me uh, now the green of course is just to make sure that I can see it well I used to use white braid so white or green are my two favorite colors uh, and then when it comes to the knot that ties them together I tie the double uni I will have a little diagram pop up on the screen right here Hopefully you guys can read it. It uh, connection knots between main line and leader definitely take a lot of practice. The FG is the best one. I still haven't learned the FG. But the combo that I was throwing for this specific fish catch, as you'll see here at the end of the video, is a uh, a little swim bait jig head. So I've got the Outcast Tackle um, Golden Eye swim bait head right here on a Lose Custom Speed Stick Spinning Rod 7-2 Medium Tube Special. Now it's meant for ripping tubes off the bottom on lakes like Lake St. Clair and Lake Michigan. But actually, I've enjoyed this one because it has quite a bit more uh, of course it has two more inches than my usual seven foot medium so I get longer casting distance and then it also has a little bit more bend before the backbone before a seven foot medium does and so that is perfect for throwing this little swim bait right here and as always when you're throwing your spinning rod you want to make sure you understand what the drag system does on a spinning reel Dra uh, spinning the drag towards your body I guess it would be, if you were to look down at it, it'd be clockwise, tightens the drag so you can hardly ever even pull it out. I keep it just about like that right there. So I set the hook into the fish, and then as soon as I start fighting that fish, I twist it like this so the fish can pull drag more easily. I definitely trust drag on my spinning rod a heck of a lot more than I trust drag on my bait casting rod. Um, and that's really just about it. I'll have all this tackle linked below for you guys to check out. But of course, I wanna show you guys some awesome fish catches from up here in New York after telling you how important the spinning rod has become to my arsenal. So thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy these fish catches from up here in New York. See you guys. There we go, that's the cast. What? Oh shoot. You had one. I just had one. There he is. Don't jump. No, he got off. Dang it. Why isn't he eating it? It's a big one, dude. Oh gosh, we got fish right, right here. There's one. That feels like a big pike. Yeah, it's gotta be a pike. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Let's see what we got, folks. This is a smallie. It's an absolute chungus. But it, it's, it's fighting like a pike is. So I'm getting ready to be piked. I don't know what we got, man. It's giving me some weird head shakes here. Thing is big. I think I got a big pike. Oh, well, actually. Give it a little more drag. I don't know what I got. Is it a smallie or a pike? It's a smallie. Oh, it's a pike. Oh. That's a big pike right there. It's a walleye. Holy cow. It's a huge walleye. Oh my gosh. This thing's a giant. Whoa. This walleye is huge. This is my PB walleye. I have never caught a walleye this big. Holy smokes, this is a big walleye. On the Outcast Tackle hair jig, or Outcast Tackle golden eye jig. Oh no, don't break me off. Don't break me off. Don't bring me off, yes! Oh no, no, get him in the net. Oh, holy cow. This walleye is huge. Oh my gosh. I have never caught a walleye this big. I don't know if this is like a, like a bona fide big one. I'm pretty sure it is. Holy cow, well, first let's show y'all how to get the hook out of this. So with a walleye pike, they've all got teeth. So I'm gonna grab him underneath the gills like this. Kind of bring him out. As you can see, he's got some nasty teeth right there. And so, just like any other jig head, you want to grab it by the head. Oh, well, it popped out. Well, let's say it was hooked like this. You want to, if, let's say it's in the mouth. You want to poke it in towards the uh, the mouth to get the pressure, to get the pressure. But let's say that it was actually, you know, poked inside the mouth like this. With a jig head, you want to grab the jig head, poke it, of course, against the way it came, and it'll pop the jig head right out. And uh, that right there is a big walleye. 
Good grief. Look at the size of those eyes on that guy. Wow, well, we're gonna get a picture real quick and let this guy go, but that's a absolute chungus. Gosh. <laughs> on the outcast tackle, Goldeneye, swim bait head. Gosh. 